Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace and blessings be upon you all. Uh, wa alaikum Yes, I'm joined here by my wife. So today's topic, it's kind of like controversial, but it really isn't. Uh, it is now, right? And it has to do with like what's going on in terms of the protests in Iran and women's rights and things of that sort. So brace yourselves, uh, inshallah. So is the hijab mandatory or not from an Islamic perspective, right? And really, if you want to look at it, this, this wasn't even a question until like the last maybe a hundred years, right? So that should automatically tell you that if it wasn't a question for 1300 years, then it was obligatory. That, let's just say that. And everyone who makes the claim about, you know, uh, it's wajib or not wajib, but like I was watching this like comment about it and they're like, uh, I forgot the name of the show, Quran, let the Quran talk or something like that. That's the name of the show. The guy didn't mention a single verse. SubhanAllah, right? And aside from that, it was like the hadith, it was like, oh, controversial, this and that. And I'm like, wow, SubhanAllah, I, I thought highly of this guy. But again, he was just, he got famous because of debates and things like that, like most people nowadays. And one thing to understand is that the word hijab is new. It wasn't really considered uh, or the word that was referenced as hijab or as we know, what we know as hijab nowadays has always been the word khimar right because that's the word in the Quran khimar and it's always been understood as that it's called the khimar right like did you wear your khimar are you wearing your khimar right it's not hijab right the hijab is like a curtain uh, a barrier uh, so anyway, so understanding that, it, does the Quran actually say it's wajib? Does the Quran mention that, uh, that the hij uh, khimar is mandatory? Now someone, I remember actually having this conversation with someone who's like, oh my dad's a scholar. I was like, great, but you're an accountant, right? Your dad's a scholar, you're an accountant, learn the difference. So his uh, according to him, he's like, you know, the hijab khimar was only mandatory for the women of the Prophet وسلم, because see, the command and the verse says this. And I'm like, dude, y you understand that khimar is not mentioned just once in the Quran, right? It's mentioned specifically to the wives of the Prophet وسلم, right? In a, a, a different surah but specifically to all believing women in Surah An-Nur. And essentially, Nur means light, and the light of Allah, or the guidance from Allah. And the Surah begins by, Suratun Anzalnaha. It is a chapter that we have sent down, right? A Surah that we have sent down. Wafaradnaha, and we have made it obligatory. Now, what did Allah made obligatory? The Surah. Which Surah? Surah An-Nur. That means everything in Surah An-Nur is what? Obligatory. Alhamdulillah. Where is the verse about hijab? In Surah An-Nur. And Allah be begins by saying, Kullil mu'minati. Tell the believing women. It wasn't saying ask the believing women. It's saying tell the believing women. So whether you're a believing woman or not, then obey. Innam al mu'minun, right? The believers are those who, what? who say, uh, when Allah says something, right? They say, Sami'na wa ata'na, right? We hear and we obey. That's if you're a believer. Because Allah says, the believers are those, when Allah says something, they hear and obey. Now, when Allah commands the believing women to wear the khimar, if they disobey, then they're not of the believing women. It's simple. Yes, there is no compulsion in religion. Ya ukhti, you don't have to wear the hijab. But don't cons don't con expect me to consider you someone who submits to Allah, aka someone who is a Muslim. So if you clearly and openly and outwardly make kufr of a command of Allah, then there is no difference between you and Iblis. I can't come out and say, I don't want to make salah. 
then you have kafart. You have made kufr of the command of Allah in terms of the obligation of salah, right? If you're fighting yourself, your desire to wear hijab, to make salah, that's a different story. But if you're outward saying, this is not mandatory, salah is not mandatory, that's kufr. Then don't expect me to treat you like a believer, right? Then that's, and nobody's forcing you to be Muslim, right? Go ahead, leave. But nobody's saying, talk bad about the faith. You chose something else, good for you. It's like the upset ex-husband or wife that they're so still obsessed with their past that they keep talking bad about their exes. Ya akhi, move on, go, <laughs> right? Or ya ukhti, move on, go. Nobody's holding you, right? So in terms of Islam in a Muslim country where it's governed by Islamic law, right? For the Muslims. So if you want your own sections, and that's honestly if I was the Iranian president or whatever they have, or whatever Muslim country, you either go to a Western country, since you idolize it so much, go be liberal, right? Because there's no such thing as a liberal Muslim, right? Because you follow the will of Allah, not your own will. So that's what Islam means. So either the, you go live in those countries or you make a section for these people away from them. So when Allah decides to punish them, <laughs> the believer, he will, the punishment will be quicker. Because Allah will not punish a people if there's believers amongst them. So you seclude the believers from the hypocrites. And Allah will take care of the rest. Yani. So in terms of the hijab, 100% it's mandatory. It's very clear in the Quran. It's very clear in the hadith. And surprisingly, most of the people that discuss the, verse, uh, the hadith, they don't mention how Aisha, radiallahu anha, understood or reacted when the verse came down, they cut their, they grabbed their most precious cloth to cover themselves with. And mind you, they weren't naked like the women that we have nowadays. They were already better dressed than the women that we have nowadays. So if they covered up more, right, which is what we know as khimar, right, to cover the woman's, her beauty, to preserve her, and we'll talk about that, and I'll include my wife in that conversation, right? To to preserve the woman's beauty, right? For who? And Allah continues in the next verse, right? To her her close kindred, and He specifically says, "Who can see you without the hijab?" Right? And He tell He begins the verse by saying, "Lower your gaze," right? To men and women, so there's a sign of respect. Right? And this is where I'm going to switch to feminism because this is really, subhanAllah, the Prophet وسلم, he says, towards the end of time, there will be a movement that will corrupt the minds of women. This is it. There's no doubt about it. Like they think they're getting their freedom and they're becoming more oppressed, but they're ignorant. It's like the men should, they, 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 they don't want to practice self-control, yet they want the whole world to be controlled so they can fulfill their desires. The irony. And in SubhanAllah, everything in, in the West, in terms of liberalism, there's always hypocrisy, like homosexuality. I want you to respect my opinion, but I can't respect your opinion, because it's contradicting, right? And the same thing for women. Well, I want you to respect me no matter what I dressed, and maybe so, you could, because I, who I am as a person, I respect you as an individual, right? And I'll try to look past my desires, but I'm, I'll be very idiotic and stupid to expect everyone in the world to be sane and to be, have high morals and values as I myself would, right? They'll be very stupid. I don't live in the world alone. And I'm not trying to force, right? Because SubhanAllah, that's still forcing, right? You want to force everyone to respect you when you lack the self-respect yourself. Right? And this is where I'm going to talk and I bring my wife in. Where what do you think about the 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 movement of saying like a woman is more free when she's naked and that is how she gets respect? Because essentially you're saying we're talking about the khamar being removed, the woman's aura essentially, right? The woman's idea of nakedness that God said that it's different for men and women, right? So the idea of uh, the, the, the nakedness of a woman, does that give them respect or not? Not at all. Like, they attract attention to 
You might need to speak up a little bit. I don't know. Like, um, speak up, but not get close. <laughs> it's so loud as I oh, can okay. Can you hear me? I, I can hear you. I don't know if they can. Uh, maybe I'll repeat it if you. Yeah. So they make men look at them in, as an, a, an object of satisfaction, yes. right? Yes, they don't look at them and respect them because they're staring at their body. Right. Or they're respecting them. You respect someone's like manners and opinions, but when you're distracting all of that and you having their attention all on your body, yes. and how are they going you're, to respect you? You're given, so she's saying that the men's attention will be directed towards what they see. It's like you see a nice house or a nice car and you're like, oh, that's a nice car. That's a nice house. Imagine you go like, hey, can't look at that car. Well, why not? It looks beautiful. Why can't I? We, we all admire beauty, right? We, we all admire beauty. So why, why wouldn't we admire that? It's like, oh, that woman has nice legs, right? Or that woman, look at the shape of her body, right? Or things like that. I'm not saying again that I would do that personally, right? I tried, I tried to lower my gaze. But you're expecting every man whose inclination is to look at women, right? Like a God, the creator like of everything, right? Whether you believe it or not. So God created everything. So he created it and he knows the thing's weakness and strength. I'm like, you know, this iPhone, if you put it in water, it's going to break, right? No matter how much water resistant it is, how much taqwa it may have, eventually it's going to break. It's gonna get water leaked in, especially if you throw it, I don't wanna get into it. So that water can damage it. And just like the look, uh, 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 I'm sorry, the verse, Allah says that the, the men, their first weakness, the things that were beautified to men first is women, right? So that's like their, 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 their what's the Superman uh, kryptonite, right? Like the kryptonite for men is women. And that's obvious. There needs to be some sort of like attraction. So there could be love and marriage and procreation, right? I'm not talking about homosexuality, right? In terms of desires, right? We're, we're, we're talking about living life according to the way, how the ma to make the world go around, right? So when you follow your desires, you're actually a very selfish person, right? And that's why God says those who don't believe in, you know, in the message, they're the worst of creation because they lack. And wallahi, you will see this in every person who's selfish. selfish. And everyone who claims that is only focused about themselves. They want the world to change, but they want to change nothing within themselves for the better. And that's why Allah says, hum Those are the worst of creation. Why are they the worst of the creation? Because they lack to see how their selfishness corrupts not only themselves, but the, but the world. And that's exactly what happens now, right? Had we let these people rule the world, we'll be where we are, chaotic, right? Everyone wants to live as they wish amongst others. How, right? And this whole world is about putting others first right religion is about being selfish selfless sorry right putting others first as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentions that none of you will have faith until you put your your brother or your essentially your sister before yourself right teaching that you should always care about others right so and the ulaika hum khayrul bariya those are the best of creation because everyone and we all incline towards being good, right? Unless corrupted otherwise by media, Facebook, YouTube, and these false ideologies, right? Wallahi, wallahi, the more you focus on your outer appearance, and this is an advice to women, and as I have a daughter, the more you focus on your outer appearance, the more your inner will just become uglier. I, I promise you. you yeah, you, you become dependent on it. And, and you will be just as you are trying to be a tool for everyone. They will use you and throw you as you as they have fulfilled your need or their need from you. 
and just as you incline. And this is why they don't harm Allah. If this guidance, right? When Allah doesn't want to oppress you, Allah wants to protect you from yourself and from those around you because He's created everything. So if you don't want to wear the hijab or the khimar, don't blame Allah for the consequences of being used as a tool throughout this life because there is nothing that will damage you more than what's going to happen to your heart as the consequences of this. Your heart is the most precious gift that you have and the more you allow it to become corrupt because of your actions and your decisions of a so-called hypocritical freedom that is purely selfish, that will only wreak havoc upon your own life, right? About men using you for their desires, right? Don't blame God, right? When you're all broken down. Why is this happening to me? Why is the world like this? And wallahi, all these people are all depressed. Every single one of them. Let them go get their freedom. Let them. They'll see the, you know, subhanAllah, God gave them that freedom so they could know and see the wrong. Right? But like I said, had I been a governor or the mayor or whatever of a country, this is, you want to, there has to be a place of right so people can see the right. And there has to be a place of wrong so people can see the wrong. Let them. You let them go to the U.S. See how women are treated, man. Wallahi. Or any of these Western countries. You think these women... Look at how they cry alone at night in bed. And all the pills that they keep popping. Right? Let them. When they cry themselves to sleep every night because... Or the 2,000 pounds of makeup that they put on just to feel good about themselves. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Right? Where a woman, a Muslim woman is dignified, is respected, is treated good. If she wants to give up that respect, let it be her choice. If she wants to be used, let it be her choice. And may Allah protect us, wallahi, and our women. Uh, and uh, from the fitna of the Dajjal, the trial of the Dajjal, because wallahi, we are at its cusp and its tool is media there's a hundred percent there's no doubt about it right how will this the gel enter every single home except by tv think about it assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh